Welcome all. I am Prem. My roll number is 2K20 ME194. I am here to present about centrifugal pumps. A pump is a device that transfers energy to aid transportation of a liquid from one location to another. A typical example is the pumping of water from a well or a sump to an overhead reservoir. Another related use of pumps is to circulate the liquid in a closed vessel. Circulation of cooling water in machines and circulation of lubricating oils to various moving parts of a machine. There are a large number of different pumps are available on basis of their shapes and sizes. Broadly Pumps are classified into two categories. One is rotodynamic pumps and one is positive displacement pumps. In a rotodynamic pump, also called dynamic pump, a rotary element known as impeller impart energy to the liquid. The impeller itself is driven by a prime motors that can be electric motor, IC engine or steam engine. The kinetic energy of a specially designed rotating impeller is transferred to the liquid in terms of pressure energy and kinetic energy and the differential pressure causes the liquid flow out to the different delivery point. The rotodynamic pumps are popularly known as centrifugal pumps and form the most common type of pumps for pumping water in domestic water supply and in many industrial applications. All centrifugal pumps are of radially outward flow type and positive displacement pumps transfer a captive volume of liquid successively through action of a device such as a piston, vane, screw etc. in a closed chamber. Further classification of displacement pumps are shown in the chart of classification of pumps. Energy transfer mechanism of a centrifugal pump. Centrifugal pumps are dynamic machines that impart energy to liquids. In these pumps, the energy of a prime mover causes an impeller to rotate inside a casing. The casing itself is filled with liquid and has a connection to the source through a pipe called suction pipe. The liquid enters the casing axially at its center called the eye. The rotating impeller with its curved blades rail the liquid radially towards the circumference of the casing. In this process, the impeller imparts velocity and pressure to the liquid. The space between the outer impeller edge and the inner surface of the casing is shaped to act as a diffuser to the pumped liquid. The passage takes the form of a gradual expanding conduit, something like the reverse action of the spiral case of a reaction turbine. In this passage, known as volute chamber, the velocity head of the liquid is gradually converted into pressure head. The liquid enters the delivery pipe at the end of the volute chamber. Components Parts of a centrifugal pump. Impeller An impeller is the equivalent of a rotor in a turbine. It is the main rotating component and consists of an assembly of a set of curved blades mounted on the main shaft. The shaft is driven by a prime mover which is used which in usual cases will be an electric motor or IC engine. The blades come in three types, shrouded or fully enclosed impellers, semi-enclosed impellers, fully open impellers. <coughs> casing. The pump casing houses 
द इम्पेलर असेंबली इन एन एयर टाइट चैम्बर द केजिंग इंक्लूड सक्शन एंड डिलीवरी ओपनिंग्स एंड अरेंजमेंट फॉर द ड्राइव शाफ्ट टू बी कनेक्टेड टू द इम्पेलर द स्पेस बिटवीन द इम्पेलर एंड द इन साइड बाउंड्री ऑफ द केजिंग इज शेप्ड टू प्रोवाइड अ डिफ्यूजर फॉर द फ्लो इमेनिटिंग फ्रॉम द इम्पेलर दिस इज टू कन्वर्ट अ कंसिडरेबल पार्ट ऑफ द कानेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ द फ्लो दैट कम्स आउट ऑफ द इम्पेलर इन टू प्रेशर एनर्जी एंड देयर बाय रिड्यूस फ्रिक्शन एंड अदर लॉसेस थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ केजिंग्स आर अवेलेबल दैट आर वॉल्यूट केजिंग डबल वॉल्यूट केजिंग एंड टर्बाइन पम्प केजिंग विद गाइड वेन्स संक्शन पाइप डिनोट्स द पाइप लीडिंग फ्रॉम द इनटेक टू द पम्प The intake is a sump situated between the level of the pump. The suction pipe will be subjected to vacuum pressures and hence air tight fitted in a necessity. At the end of the suction pipe, a strainer is fitted to prevent debris from choking the suction pipe in inlet. Further, a non-return foot valve is fitted at the downstream end of the suction pipe to prevent the suction pipe draining out when the pump is stopped also the foot valve helps in priming of the pump the pipe that carries the liquid from the pump to the destination is known as a delivery pipe in the delivery pipe adjacent to the pump a control valve or gate valve is provided for purpose of regulating the flow all centrifugal pumps are started with the delivery valve in closed position further before stopping the pump the delivery valve is closed first and then the pump is stopped this operation is to prevent a possible back flow from the delivery pipe and consequent damage to the pump assembly classifications centrifugal pumps come in a very wide variety of types they could be broadly classified into following euler equations for centrifugal pump general vector relationship the basic equation relating the velocities their momentum and the moment of momentum of the flow to the torque developed in the shaft of a constant speed rotodynamic machine is known as euler equation the moment of momentum principle is newton's second law applied to a rotating fluid mass the steady state moment of momentum equation for two dimensional rotating fluid flow states that if r is the position vector in a curvy linear motion of a fluid f is the external force vector and m is the linear momentum vector the moment of momentum principle states that r cross f will be equal to d by dt of r cross m if the moment of external force r cross f is replaced by torque t then t is equals to d by dt into d by dt of r cross m the torque exerted by the fluid mass on the shaft is equal and opposite to t this steady state general vector relationship of torque and rate of change of moment of momentum when applied to a rotodynamic machine results in a simple relationship known as euler equation in the following sections the derivation of a euler equation and its variant for a pump are presented
Euler equation for centrifugal pump. Consider a centrifugal pump as shown in figure 5.2. The flow is uniform along the circumference and is steady further. It is assumed that there are no mechanical or hydraulic friction and other eddy losses in the system. The impeller is considered to have an infinite number of blades having zero friction and all the flow from the inlet is assumed to be guided with uniform velocity at the exit. This assumption assures that there is no circulation induced cross flows in the system. Since the flow is steady, the rotational speed of the impeller is constant. The impeller as above is known as ideal impeller. A schematic sketch of the impeller blade and the velocity triangles at the inlet and outlet are shown in figure 5.6. Referring the suffixes 1 and 2 to the inlet and outlet respectively, consider in detail the flow along one blade of the impeller. Let R1 and R2 equals to radii of fluid element at entrance and exit. Vr1 and Vr2 relative velocities at entrance and exit. V1 and V2 absolute velocities at entrance and exit. Omega equals to angular velocity of the impeller and revolution per minute of the impeller. Note that the angular velocity of the impeller that is omega equals to 2 pi n by 60. U equals to tangential velocity of the blade at any radius r equals to omega r. U1 equals to omega r1 equals to pi d1 by n divided by 60 where d1 equals to outer diameter of the impeller and u2 equals to omega r2 equals to pi d2 by n pi d2 n by 60 where d2 equals to inner diameter of the impeller. For a steady frictionless system, torque exerted by the impeller on the fluid is equal to increase in the rate of change of moment of momentum. Since the, since the set, bed, set of blades are assumed to be mounted symmetrically on the impeller and the flow is uniform along the perimeter of the impeller at the inlet and outlet. The torque exerted by the impeller on the fluid and which is transmitted to the shaft without any loss due to friction and other losses is given by torque T equals to rate of mass flow through the impeller into increase of moment of momentum of the fluid in each blade equals to m into under bracket r2 v2 cos alpha 2 minus r1 v1 cos alpha 1. Since rho is equals to density of water is constant, m equals to rate of mass flow through the impeller equals to rho q where q equals to total discharge entering the impeller now t equals to rho q under bracket r2 v2 cos alpha 2 minus r1 v1 cos alpha 1 energy transferred in unit time equals to power transmitted by the impeller to water p equals to t omega equals to rho q omega under bracket r2 v2 cos alpha 2 minus r1 v1 cos alpha 1 since omega r equals to u that is equal to tangential component of the impeller at the radius r u1 equals to omega r1 and u2 equals to omega r2 power is equal to rho q under bracket u2 v2 cos alpha 2 minus u1 v1 cos alpha 1 this equation 5.6 is known as Euler's equation 
रिलेटिंग पावर इन अस सेंट्रीफ्यूगल पम्प थैंक यू हेलो हेलो एवरी वन माई नेम इज तुरशु पांडे एंड माई रोल नंबर इज टू के ट्वेंटी एम ई वन नाइन्टी फाइव एंड हेयर नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न सम बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ चैप्टर पम्प फ्रॉम द बुक ऑफ के सुब्रमण्यम सो वी मेजरली फोकस ऑन थ्योरी पार्ट बेसिकली वी मेजरली फोकस ऑन अंडरस्टैंडिंग पार्ट रेदर देन द सॉल्विंग ऑफ यू नो डेरिवेशन हेयर आई हैव पुटेड डेरिवेशन फॉर यू ऑल्सो बट वी मेजरली फोकस ऑन फाइनल एक्सप्रेशन For your understanding purpose, here we put the whole derivation for any expression. Also, let so let's start our first our first concept that we need to understand is analysis based on Euler's equation. Uh, so basically, we need to understand some heads in pump analysis. Like the first head that we need to understand is static head. So static head refers to the vertical distance from the water level of the sun to the water level of the receiving reservoir on the delivery side. Like we will see in the uh, picture also. Static head is made up of two types of head. That is static head lift and static delivery lift. Like uh, uh, for what need that uh, pump is helping for? Pump is for uh, leveling of water from lower side to upper side. That is why, like in our ghar, in our home also, we have motor. That that is basically pump. So pump is used for uh, raising water from lower side to upper side. so now we will see the basic uh, understanding picture of a pump that is our pump here we can see that uh, the uh, bottom point is uh, water level that from bottom we are raising our water to like on the roof or the upper level so here you can see that there is a static suction lift that is our h that is our hs and the static delivery lift that is our hd and the static head is the total sum of uh, static suction lift and static delivery lift so after that we will focus on euler head that is our theoretical head of a pump so the formula of euler head is uh, v u2 u uh, v u2 u2 upon by g that, that we will understand from the velocity triangle further so and we have understand the uh, velocity triangle previous also so euler head is basically energy per unit weight of liquid supplied by the impeller so here we see that there is a basically energy per unit weight that is basically uh, in the numerator here m term also and in uh, denominator that is mg so m and m gets cancelled out and we basically found the formula of euler head now after that we need to understand the uh, manometric head so basically the manometric head is the actual total head that could be achieved by the pump so that is your uh, euler head and extend to the energy loss that basically here in pump we see that some casing also and due to some losses there are some loss so basically the manometric head is the subtraction of euler head by the loss that we get in our uh, uh, pump which is due to some casing or some other losses also so that is our manometric head uh, after that Uh, now, now we will understand the expression of manometric head. As I have told you earlier, that we will majorly focus on the final expression. And for your understanding purpose, I have put it here the whole derivation also. So the base, so the final expression for manometric head is here your P3 by uh, gamma minus P2 by gamma. And how we get this, you can definitely refer the whole derivation. After that. After that, we will understand the minimum speed of pump. Like this pump is uh, working, what is the minimum speed? Maximum speed that we will understand by the nature of the pump. But the, there is always a specific minimum speed in a pump. That is when a pump is started by switching the motor. The flow will take place only when the rise in pressure due to the impeller action is large enough to overcome manometric head. That manometric head we have understood earlier. That is the subtraction of Euler head to the loss. That is due to casing. Consider the Euler equation. That is our Euler equation that we have earlier studied earlier uh, studied earlier also. That is our basically Euler head. And in this Euler head, that is that is basically the complete derivation. And we majorly focus on final conclusion of this. And that is our the minimum the minimum speed that is required for running any pump is here. You can see that 60 over pi d2 square minus d1 square under the 2g hm. so basically what is d2 and d1 they are basically <coughs> sorry two different diameters of any impeller and what is hm that is our manometric head that we have understood earlier okay and after that the important concept that we will study here is theoretical head like discharge relationship of a pump like discharge you know that 
Q is equal to A V. That is constant throughout the channel. So consider the theoretical head. That is our Euler head, obviously. And relationship is given by 5.14 equation that we have studied earlier. So the Euler head is basically U two V U two by G that we have studied from our velocity triangle that we have studied earlier. And now here you can see that what is what is V U two, what is V W two, what is everything here we can see that. So again, this is the complete derivation that you can refer for your understanding purpose. And the final conclusion of this is uh, here that our uh, Euler head is basically come that U two by G U two minus Q over pi B two D two cos beta cot beta two that we have got from our deriv uh, derivation part. So at final, if we represent this as a constant, that is our a, and if we represent that is uh, this constant b, so the final expression that we got for uh, uh, Euler's head is for theoretical. We need to understand that it is theoretical. That is a minus b q cot beta two. And again, here is something uh, Euler's head for set off. So Euler's head for set off is basically simple u two square by g. Uh, here again, uh, important concept that we need to understand is relationship between Euler head uh, uh, between and Euler's head in discharge and Euler's head uh, and simply head and volumetric flow rate. Here we can simply say that when our beta two and what is our beta two? That for this you can refer the velocity triangle that we have studied earlier. If our beta two is uh, simply ninety degree, that is the exit flow angle. If our beta two is simply ninety degree, that is our radial flow. And if our beta two is less than ninety degree, sorry, greater than ninety degree, that is our forward flow. And if our beta two is less than ninety degree, that is our backward flow. Uh, with respect to discharge, and in simply, if uh, we are talking about head and uh, volumetric flow rate, that is our Q. If our beta two is greater than ninety, that is our upper graph. And if our beta two is exactly ninety degree, that is our middle graph. And if our beta two is less than ninety degree, that is our lower graph. After that, this is the sub classification of centrifugal pumps. Like on the basis of the ex uh, exit uh, angle, there are three types of uh, centrifugal pump. Like we have seen the graph also. When your beta two is less than ninety degree, your beta two is equal exactly ninety degree, and your beta two is greater uh, greater than ninety degree. For this, the description of uh, blade tip is the first one. You know, when our beta two is less than ninety degree, backward curved backward curved blade. Like we uh, we will see their picture also. Sometimes later, outlet tip of the blade curves in a direction of opposite to that of ro rotation of the impeller. We will see this. We will see for this picture also, and uh, this this falls in the classification of fast speed. When our beta two is ninety degree, that is our radial blade, and the relative velocity at outlet is in radial direction, like it is completely go away straight. Okay, and uh, uh, this uh, falls in the classification of medium speed. When our beta two is greater than ninety degree, it is forward curved blade, and outlet tip of the blade curves in the direction of rotation of impeller, and this falls in the uh, category of slow speed. Here we can see that, uh, here we can see that the water comes like the water comes from here and uh, from beta one angle, and it exits from beta two angle. In first case, here we can clearly see that the beta two Is greater than our 90 degree, and in the second case, our here our beta two is completely 90 degree, and in third case, here we can see that our beta two is. Uh, sorry, in first case, there is beta two is less than 90 degree, and in third case, that is our beta two is greater than uh, 90 degree. Now, uh, in an uh, important concept that we need to understand is energy losses in impeller. Like we have studied in a manometric head also, manometric head is basically uh, subtraction of your Euler's head to the some losses that is that is in casing that is due to casing. So again, uh, there is some energy loss in impeller. The Euler's head expression is V two uh, U two V U two by G that we have developed our relationship on the basis of some govern governing principles. So the first uh, loss that we will understand is hydraulic loss. So there, uh, so there are lots of ways where, where the hydraulic losses can be classified, like your uh, due to your uh, circulatory flow, due to your fluid friction at the 
flow passage like when the water is flowing through any passage or any pipe there is due to friction between your water and the pipe there is some friction and due to that friction your speed is basically reduces that is basically falls in the category of your hydraulic loss after that some shock loss at the entrance of the impeller like when you when your water is basically entering in the impeller at the starting there is some shock loss okay after that uh, there is some non hydraulic losses also hydraulic losses basically means when your water is running uh, running uh, when your water is running so means flowing so there is some friction loss there is some shock loss when your water is non flowing like in non hydraulic cases there is some leakage loss there is some leakage loss there is some mechanical loss so and uh, mechanical loss yes so basically we have studied two types of loss your first one is your basically due to hydraulic and the second one is due to non hydraulic after that we will understand the efficiencies there are basically three to four types of efficiency that we will understand the first one is volumetric efficiency that is very important volumetric efficiency is discharge reaching the pump outlet upon which discharge entering the eye of the impeller that is your q over q plus qt your manometric efficiency is basically manometric head developed upon my head imparted to the liquid by the impeller that is our hm over he which is basically your g hm over vu2 u2 like your he is a vu2 u2 by g and your hm hm is basically your he minus some losses <laughs> okay after that we have our mechanical efficiency mechanical efficiency is simply power actually de delivered by the impeller upon my power supplied to the shaft this it is basically your gamma q plus ql into he over p so which is a finally he over he plus h mechanical so and it is now the final one is overall efficiency the overall efficiency is power output from the pump upon my power supplied by the prime mover of to the shaft that is your gamma q hm over p and what is your hm your hm is manometric head and that is here one concept another is brake power your brake power basically your p simply which is your gamma q hm over uh, your overall efficiency so basically we get a relationship finally here is your overall efficiency is your mechanical efficiency volumetric efficiency and manometric efficiency it is a very important expression that is used in your gate ese and another entrance exams also now now we will understand the working ratios of centrifugal pumps there are lots of around 5 around 10 to 12 concept that we need to understand is your relative inlet diagram basically your d1 upon my d2 the relative inlet size is d1 upon d2 where d2 is the outside diameter uh, which varies from 1 by 3 to 2 by 3 and the ratio between d1 by d2 is 0.5 which is in common common uh, choice like when we are solving a question that and that is not given in question and for our understanding for our easier we will take the value of d1 by d2 is 0.5 after that speed ratio q which is it is simply your u2 over under the root of 2g hm uh, we need to understand it is hm not he flow ratio that is kf which is simply vf2 over under the root of 2g hm after that normal discharge q it, it is simply c pi b do, d2 vf2 normal discharge when your water is leaving the blades leaving the impeller and the value of all d2 b c vf2 is given here and the, now we need to understand the inlet blade angle which is your b1 beta 1 and in case of pump that is from 10 degree to 25 degree outlet outlet blade angle b2 that uh, that basically used for backward torque blades in the norm and the range of outlet blade angle is 20 degree to 40 degree generally b2 is made slightly larger than b1 for better efficiency of pump number of fans your number of fans that is basically your z and your z is varies from 6 to 12 suction and delivery pipes it is again uh, uh, for small pumps both the suction and delivery pipes will have the same diameter however for large pumps suction pipes would have slightly larger diameter than delivery pipe efficiency we have uh, we have studied all three types of efficiency uh, so the overall efficiency must be from the range of 90 24 to 92% for better pump and the overall efficiency also for smaller pump that is range from 65 to 85% overall range it is from uh, operate sorry over, operating edge it is from 40% to 110% specific speed that is from n under the root of q over h raised to power 3 by 4 which is varies from 10 to 220 after that there is uh, characteristics of 
एक्चुअल साइंटिफिकल पंप सो फॉर दिस द मेन करेक्टरिस्टिक्स इज हेयर इट इज अ कर्व दैट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड इट देयर इज अ कर्व बिटवीन हेड एंड डिस्चार्ज दैट दैट इज वेयर इज व्हेन Like here, see wherever N3 is 4 uh, 450 rpm, your N2 is 960, and your N1 is 720. What happens when your speed increases? When your speed increases, the head is also increases, which is obvious because uh, what is the formula of your head? For simply you have said that is your V U2 U2 over G. So for this reason, uh, when your speed increases, the head is also increases. and thus another two important graphs also here between your power supplied between discharge and your F overall efficiency between discharge here again that i have said to you when uh, your speed increases the curve is also increases like when your speed is 450 rpm that is our higher curve as gradually your speed decreases the curve is also decreases and that is simply in case of overall efficiency also here you can see that as your speed increases over graphs is also increases so this is from my side if you find any difficulty to understand any concept kindly comment below in comment section i will teach uh, i will make sure that give my best to explain you whenever uh, anything that were, that were in doubt thank you so much so what we do is we define a new feature known as similarity scale ratios so moving on to that slide so here we can see that we are taking a ratio denoted by r of different entities see that the length ratio we have taken is the ratio of diameter d of model upon d of prototype so we use this ratio that is ratio of r represent the ratio of model for a particular entity upon ratio of prototype of that particular entity only so our formula reduces to as we can see for the discharge or flow coefficient QR is equals to NR DR to the raised to the power three. For head coefficient, it is reduced to HR is equals to NR whole square DR square. For the power coefficient, it is reduced to N raised to the power three to DR raised to the power five. Specific speed. Specific fixed speed of a pump is a parameter involving the speed discharge and head obtained by combining two scaling ratios. Discharge and head coefficient, and it is given by the formula n specific speed is equals to n into root of q divided by h raised to the power three by four, where h m is the manometric head of the pump at maximum efficiency point. Thus, the specific speed of a pump could be defined as the speed of a pump running at maximum efficiency under a unit head and delivering unit. discharge so moving ahead so this is a graph that shows the approximate range of optimum efficiency of centrifugal pumps as a function of specific speed so here we can see this and the corresponding changes in the impeller shapes are also indicated schematically in the figure <laughs> the radial flow type impellers are seen to have smaller specific speeds and the axial flow pumps have the highest range of nsq values with the mixed flow pumps occupying in the region in between as we can see in this graph the mixed flow pumps and axial flow pumps and the radial flow pumps we see that see how the efficiency is increasing as we increase the specific speed and there is a you know common region in between radial flow and mixed flow and similarly a mixed flow and axial flow no so this overlapping region as you could recall this feature is similar this feature is similar to the overlap region of the three types of the turbines that we have already studied so so this is the end of specific speed now we'll be moving ahead with cavitation in centrifugal pumps cavitation phenomena cavitation is a dangerous phenomena that haunts the entire gamut of hydraulic machines when the absolute local pressure at any point in a conduit carrying a liquid approaches the vapor pressure pv of the liquid the dissolved gases and liquid vapor come out of the liquid as bubbles the phenomena of formation travel and collapse of vapor pressure is known as cavitation so so what could be the impacts of cavitation we will be looking in the slides 
so here is the impact the first one is performance impairment the there is a reduction of head and efficiency is seen due to cavitation second is the mechanical damage the reduction is useful life so due to cavitation there is more wear and tear more losses in the material so which reduces overall life of our machine you know so the third is noise low frequency noise up to about 10 kilohertz with up to 10 kilohertz not hurt not not damages our machine but as we increase the efficiency from 10 to 200 there are significant chance significant chances of damage possible to our machine pressure pulsation torque fluctuation and vibration of casing and bearing house so these are some of the impacts caused by cavitation now so we have come to the last part of our our content and that is effect of viscosity so centrifugal pumps as we know that these pumps use various kinds of liquids from light oils chemicals and water to heavy viscous liquids so it can be generalized that for all liquids whose coefficient of viscosity is equal to or less than that of water there is no change in the nature of flow in the pump and hence the pump characteristics are not affected by the viscosity in that range so next slide yes so this is a graph representing effect of viscosity on the performance of a centrifugal pump so there are two graphs as you can see first one is that power is related and in this head is related so it is obvious that in pumping very viscous liquids the centrifugal pumps becomes less efficient it is generally considered that mu r is equals to 300 is the upper limit of efficient adaptability of centrifugal pumps and for higher values of mu r the best choice would be in the domain of positive placement pumps so now i think my parts are all over yes thank you and now my partner prithvi choudhury will be continuing from here so here we are going to talk about the variance of simple centrifugal pump so here we have double suction pump and also uh, multi-stage pumps so in double suction pump basically it is a variant of single suction pump which is also known as uh, ordinary centrifugal pump which allows inlet of water at the eye of the impeller on one side only a variant of the ordinary single, single uh, suction pump is the double suction pump so in this arrangement it is made for the liquid to enter the impeller from both sides this enables large quantities of liquid to be handled by the pump with relatively low inlet velocity so a double suction pump is similar to two single suction pumps placed back to back with no solid plate in between them so as we can see in this figure given below so this is the outlet and this is the inlet and if we join two single suction pump it will result in two double suction pump so uh, in the conclusion double suction pumps are advantageous in handling large amount of the liquid but due to high high cost of double suction pump it is only used in selected applications moving on So basically multi-stage centrifugal pump consists of a series of identical impellers mounted on a common shaft. So the discharge of one impeller goes into another as inflow through a set of stationary guide vanes. Thus a multi-stage pump is a set of identical pumps connected in series. So the last impeller discharges to the delivery pipe through a diffuser. The number of stages depends on the impeller design and the desired head. And so multi-stage pumps are available for the heads as high as 2000 meter. Uh, as usually, ev even members of impellers are used. <coughs> While mounting the impellers on the shaft, one half of the impellers will have inlet facing one side and another half will be have their inlets in opposite directions as shown in figure 5.42 which was on the previous page. This one. So the arrangement will ensure that the axial thrust of two groups 
compensate each other with the resultant zero axial thrust on the shaft. Such an ar arrangement of impellers is known as opposed mounting. Okay, so multi-stage pumps come in both horizontal and vertical mounting. The specific speed of these pump is calculated based on head at each stage. So moving on, mixed flow pumps. This is another variant. So these pumps are mainly high head and low discharge units. As the discharge increases and the head decreases relatively, the pure radial unit becomes very unwidely and slow. However, by suitably adjusting the configuration of the impeller geometry, relatively higher specific speeds can be accommodated by efficient sites units. So it is a mixed flow of liquid transisting from axial flow. Axial flow is no purely radial. It is a mixed flow of liquid transiting from axial at entrance to exit at an angle to the radial direction. The liquid experiences both radial acceleration and lift force. Such pumps are called as mixed flow pumps. Moving on. So mixed flow pumps are used in handling moderate to large quantities of uh, liquid at relatively moderate and to small heads. And uh, if we see, uh, typical conventional application include drainage pumping and lift irrigation. Okay. Current uh, use includes many types of industrial use of all types, chiefly in condenser circulating service in other plants. So if you talk about volume type pumps, uh, they find application in condensate cooling in power plants for very large pumps. The volute is sometimes made of concrete. They are also used in water supply with reservoir intake. And mixed uh, flow bowl type pumps are usually uh, in vertical and inclined settings and find applications in irrigation, land drainage and flood management. Also they are used in water supply from river on reservoir intake. In these pumps, the bowl assembly is submerged in the intake well as well as such as there is no primary issue. So this is the uh, comparative impeller configuration. So in A, it is radial flow pump and B is mixed flow volute type pumps and C is the schematic sketches of a mixed flow vertical bowl type pump. Moving on. So here we are talking about the dangers of uh, the pumps. These pumps can be used that we talked about earlier. So mixed fl uh, flow pumps come in a wide range of heads and discharges and the following could uh, considered as a normal average range of variables in single stage pumps. Such as as we see ranges of single stage mixed uh, flow pumps variables. So the head is uh, 30, 3 to 30 meter discharge is 0 0.10 meter cube per second to 11 cube meter cube per second size 200 meter to millimeter to 1500 millimeter specific speed 80 to 180 and efficiency 80 to 90 percent uh, so the figure we saw earlier in the previous page this one so a and b show the comparative characteristics features of the impeller of radial flow and mixed flow volume type pumps and c showed as a sketch showing the details of a vertical bowl type pump the bulb like feature called a bulb in figure four five point so mixed flow pumps come in a wide range of heads and discharge as we talked and considered normal average range of variables in single stage pumps instances of specific application having excluded this range to exist in plenty so here we're going to talk about see the ranges of single stage and mixed flow pump variables so as we can see head is 3 to 30 meter discharge is 0.1 meter cube per second to 11 meter cube per second size is 200 millimeter to 1500 millimeter specific speed 80 to 180 efficiency 80 percent to 90 percent so in the uh, previous page we saw a figure this one so in a and b which showed the comparative characteristic features of the impeller of radial flow and mixed flow volume type pumps uh, figure c that we saw is a schematic sketch showing the details of a vertical bowl type pump the bulb like feature called bow and this figure in 5.45 the one on the down, downward down part is a typical performance characteristics of a mixed flow vertical pump. The HQ relationship of a mixed flow pumps, the head falls much steeply with the discharge when compared to the similar plot of a centrifugal pump, as you can see in the figure. So, if you notice, the shed off head is about 180% of normal head, the operating range is limited to 60 to 120% of normal value.
moving on so axial flow pumps which is also called propeller pumps so what are these so first we will uh, read the description of the pumps uh, the progressive change in the shape of the impeller of a rotodynamic pump with the speed specific speed is illustrated in 5.35 uh, which is on the previous pages uh, the radial flow and mixed flow pumps cater to the specific speed ranges of 10 to 100 and 80 to 220 respectively at very high speed uh, the nsq can be greater than 200 the resulting impeller shape is that of a propeller shaped pump and receives the flow axially and discharges it axially so basically axial flow pumps provide thrust to the fluid through creation of lift force due to rotation of spe specially shaped blades the blades are aerofoil shaped in cross section and twisted in appearance and are usually three to eight in number a pressure difference is created between the front and the rear of the rotating blades and the fluid moves from the inlet to the outlet of the pump due to this differential pressure the flow in the axial direction with no initial and final whirl component this is assured by providing a set of inlet guide vanes for the flow approaching the impeller and a set of guide vanes at the exit of the vanes uh, to remove any whirl components from the flow and straighten the exit discharge along the axial direction so the components of axial flow pump assembly are uh, given in this the bell shaped entry with inlet guide vanes propeller assembly on shaft that is connected to the primer mover exit guide vane to set uh, remove whirl component of the flow cylindrical casing that has the close clearance with the propeller upper part of the casing is connected to a vertical diverging section the vertical portion of the assembly is called column assembly and the delivery pipe takes off through a nice so the delivery pipe takes off through an easy elbow bend from the column assembly the drive shaft emerges out of the conduct at the bend the discharge uh, flange can be above or below the flow level the intake is normal through a well designed intake structure moving on so this is our details of our vertical axial flow pump as you can see there is a shaft hub impeller is there stationary outlet guide vane and stationary inlet guide vane and in the b part it is motor outlet column assembly casing and inlet so here we talk gonna talk about impeller what is impeller the impeller or uh, if you talk about an axial flow pump the impeller of that is a specially designed blades set of specially designed blades that have the appearance of a propeller there's no shroud covering on the tips of the blades the blades are connected to the drive shaft at the hub what so what is up the hub is, itself is a small bulge in the shaft and has the blades attached to it so generally the blades are fixed rigidly to the hub uh, however in Kevlar turbine pumps with adjustable pitch uh, blades are also available for use in specific applications moving on analysis procedure for axial flow pump so the analysis of the axial flow pump is similar to that of a uh, propeller yeah, or we can say Kaplan turbine. In simple one dimensional approach, two methods are in common use, A through use of Euler equation and B through use of aerofoil cascade theory. So advanced analysis techniques on the lines of the design fans and propellers are in use and are beyond the scope of this book. So what we can uh, do? So a quick but approximate method for preliminary study on the lines used in the analysis of Kaplan turbine is indicated below, which is given. So if we let D1 is equal to outer diameter of the propeller, DH is equal to outer diameter of the hub with suffixes 1 and 2, okay, and area of flow is equal to pi by 4 D1 square minus DH square into K1, where K1 is the net area factor after deducting of the area occupied by the plates in the cross section. So hence area is equal given pi by 4 d1 square minus d square vf1 is equal to vf2 is equal to vf where velocity of flow which is taken constant in the entire inlet outer space and discharge will be q is equal to pi by 4 d1 square minus dh square into vf blade have aerofoil sections a set of inlet guide vanes uh, direct the flow properly to the imp impeller further a set of exit vanes blades uh, removed any residual world component from the exit flow and direct the flow among the radial direction axial direction let u1 be the peripheral velocity at inlet at any radius r and u2 be the peripheral uh, velocity at the outlet so u1 is equal to u2 is equal to u is equal to 2 pi rn in above 60. so the flow is uh, assumed to enter the pump impeller axially without any world component 
the Euler equation states H e is equal to V u2 into u2 uh, minus V u1 into u1 upon g is equal to V u2 into u2 upon g. So V u1 will be 0 as we know. So further the manometric efficiency will be V u2 into u2 upon g hm where hm will be the net head. So moving on. So here is the Euler equation. So axial pumps are so designed that constant head is developed at all values of the radius of the propeller. Uh, values of alpha 1, beta 1 and inlet and beta 2 at the outlet change among the blade length accordingly. Angles beta 1 and beta 2 are both minimum at the blade tip and increases along the radius of a maximum at the hub. So mean radius will be d1 plus dh by 2 which is used sometimes as representative location for estimation of values for specific speed, power and overall efficiency. Moving on. So what is performance characteristics? So basically performance characteristics of a typical axial flow pump uh, is uh, shown in the figure. So the variation of head, brake power and efficiency with discharge is shown in non-dimensional form in using this. So the y-axis is percentage end of the best efficiency value and the x-axis is percentage of best efficiency discharge. Okay, so we can see. So the head drops off rapidly uh, with the increase in the discharge, the set of value of the head is 250%. That is 2.5 times. And the normal head further at only 20% increase in normal discharge, the head falls by about 50% of normal value. It has been found that axial flow pumps with fixed blades are likely to have flow instability at uh, around 50% normal flow. So moving on to the applications. So as we saw, uh, axial flow pumps are suitable for lifting large quantities of water through relatively small heads and hence find uh, application in diverse fields where uh, such as need, need arises. The of heads is from 1 to 12 meter, impeller size is from 200 mm to 3 meter and discharge range is from 0.1 meter cube second per second to 50 meter cube per second. So here are listed some typical applications of axial flow pumps include uh, lift, irrigation, lift irrigation, dry docks, land drainage, dewatering, fluid water management, industrial service, coffer dams and heat recovery systems, river intake, high volume mixing application, water treatment, nuclear reactor water circulation, pollution and effluent control, uh, ballast control in marine applications. So these were some applications. Since the head involved in axial flow pumps is rather small, the pumping system is sensitive to even small amounts of head loss as they form a, sustain, a substantial percentage of total head. Okay, so that typically the problem due to uh, intake vortices is reflected in the reduction of discharge and mechanical vibration and consequent damages of pump unit so an advantage of axial flow pump is that it is not easily clogged and can handle some debris. My name is Priyan Sharma and my role number is 2K20 ME200. My topic for the day is matching of pump and system characteristics. Now let's start. Firstly, we need to plot the system and pump curve on the graph in which the x-axis represents the discharge which is Q and the y-axis represents the head which is H. The figure represents the situation where the pump installed in a system just starts to pump. The discharge starts from value 0. The variation in head can be noted by observing the curve MN. There will be a point A where both the curve MN and the curve UV will intersect. This point is also known as operating point of the pump. Now if there is an efficiency curve plotted, so the peak of this efficiency curve which is BEP will be vertical to the point A. So we need to select a pump whose BEP point should be on the point A or we can say it the BEP point should coincide with point A for achieving ideal case and to fulfill the main objective of the pump system mechanism. The next topic is pumps in parallel. So now as we can see here it is the H versus Q graph. Firstly we will understand the need of placing pumps in parallel. 
So as a radial flow centrifugal pump have relatively small discharge, hence to handle a large flow against high heads by a single pump would be uneconomical. So by placing two identical pumps in parallel, if the situation in pumps is ideal, so the head would remain unaltered and we can double the discharge. Now let's try to understand it with a graph. Here we will consider two identical pumps, pump 1 and pump 2. Uh, we can see curve MN. Here curve MN represent a single pump curve. A curve is obtained when two identical pumps 1 and 2 are connected in parallel. As we discussed earlier, the ideal output should be doubling of the discharge against a given head. Now pump cover sorry curve for this combination of pumps can be obtained by doubling the x coordinate of the curve mn hence we obtained a curve for the combination of pumps in parallel which is curve mr which is also known as parallel duplex pump hence the conclusion we draw from the pumps in parallel is that each of the pump in parallel produces less flow in comparison to the flow they can produce if they are used singly Now, the next topic is pumps in series. Let's first understand the requirement to place the pumps in series manner. So when we need to pump a liquid to a higher head than the designed head of one pump, as when the two pumps which are identical, let's say one and two are connected in series. So pumps connected in series have some discharge and hence has the same discharge and hence the head increases two times. Let us now see this and understand it through a graph. Consider pump 1 and 2 which are connected in series. The characteristic curve of this combination is called series duplex curve. Now if the BEP of the pump is made to coincide with point A in a series connection then point B will be to the right of BEP and hence the efficiency will be less. Secondly there is also a special case of pumps in series known as booster pump. In this the pressure in the downstream is increased by placing a pump at a distance from a primary pump. Its main application is handling the problem areas of the sub main in the water distribution system. Next topic is some aspects relating to pump system and interaction. When manufacturer supplies the pump curve, then it is limited to the operational range of pump. So as we don't know the nature of the behavior of the pump, Thus, curve should not be extended. Secondly, if the system curve is not intersecting pump curve, then the pump is not capable of meeting the demands of any of the flow. Thirdly, we should make it sure that the pump connected in series or parallel should be identical because if not, then it will become an hindrance more than help. Fourthly, if the system curves cut the duplex curve, not the single pump curve, then it signifies that the single pump operation is not feasible. Next topic is priming of pumps. So basically pump priming is the process of removing air from the pump and the suction line. In this process the pump is being filled with the liquid being pumped out and being pumped and this liquid forces all the air gases or vapors contained in the passageway of the pump to escape out. Priming may be done manually or may be done automatically. Now, some methods for priming of centrifugal pump. Water is poured in the casing. When it comes to small water pumps, while the water is filling, the air vent is kept open. After completely filling the water, the pump starts and the any, resid and the any residual air which is left escapes through the air vent. In larger pumps, uh, the air is evacuated through the devices such as ejector and vacuum pumps. Thirdly, when the pump is located below the sump liquid level, the priming is not an issue. Measurement of parameters, all the testing procedures starting from the test bed and fixtures to the measurements and the accuracies of measurement must all conform to selected relevant standards. The following two standards are followed extensively and internationally for testing of centrifugal pumps which are ISO 9906-2012 and test grades 1 and 2 and ANSI 
HI 14.6-2011. The following basic parameters are measured and acquired digitally in the course of testing of pumps. The first one being discharge, which is also denoted with Q. The discharge is measured and recorded continuously through use of magnetic flow meters of appropriate length and accuracy. The second one is pressure. Accurate measure of pressure is vital to accurate testing of the pump. Pressures are measured through the use of pressure transducers, as I mentioned earlier. The location of pressure tapping must be such that the flow is uniform and the velocity at that location does not have any radial component. Bends and walls must be sufficiently far away from the pressure measuring points. Pressures at the downstream and upstream of the pump are measured at locations situated at the minimum distance of twice the diameters of the pyrometer pipe. Further, the upstream locations must have a straight stretch of at least four times the diameter of the pipe before the tapping. Similarly, the downstream tapping must be followed by a straight stretch pipe of at least two diameters in length. The recorded pressures are converted into pressure heads by using the density of water corresponding to the temperature of water as recorded by the data acquisition system. The next two are the speed of rotation and power as follows. Optical sensor tachometers used to acquire the sharp speed data. Normally, pump tests are conducted at constant speed and the speed sensor will also give inputs to the speed control governor. To achieve variable speed capability, the motor driving the pump will have a variable frequency drive. And the fourth one is power. The input power is measured in two ways. The, by knowing the characteristics of the electric motor driving the pump, the input electric power is measured by a power meter and the second one is by knowing the speed of rotation of the pump shaft and the torque transmitted to the pump by the electrical drive. The mechanical power output of the pump is calculated as a product of torque and the angular velocity of the pump shaft. The next one is temperature and air concentration. In temperature, the thermal center located in the suction pipe of the pump continuously senses the temperature of the circulating water and in air concentration in tests related to NPSHR and cavitation the air concentration of the water is important and as such a sensor is measured to measure air concentration continuously is provided in the test setup. There are several tests to acquire pump characteristics. These tests are routine tests for the pump manufacturer's lab. The general op operation of these tests is through computerized control panel using appropriate software. After the start of the pump in the test circuit, a certain discharge in the operating range of the pump is set. When the flow of in the test circuit is stabilized, the readings of the operational parameters of pump, the discharge, head, power output, input to the pump are recorded at the set point. This constitutes one set of data for one set point. The discharge is now varied to another set point and the procedure is repeated. Inspection test. The objective of this test is to inspect the pump for finished quality of manufacturing and to confirm that it follows the predefined operational characteristics. The tests are practically same as the performance test described above, except for the fact that the data is obtained for only two to five selected predefined critical set points. In that way, these are short versions of the performance tests. Test for NPSHR. NPSHR is defined as the head in absolute units measured above the prevailing vapor pressure head required by the pump to obtain satisfactory pumping head, not more than 3% reduction in head at constant flow and prevent excessive cavitation. The formula of NPSHR is given below. At the critical value of uh, sigma, the NPSH is equal to NPSHR. It is also called NPSHR 3% to indicate the criteria by which the critical value is determined. For a given pump running at constant speed, NPSH can be reduced by increasing HS or by decreasing the pressure at the suction end of the pump by throttling the suction pipe. The NPSHR test consists of selecting a given discharge point at the normal HQ curve and decreasing the NPSH as indicated above to obtain a curve of NPSH versus HM that appears similar to figure 7.3. From this curve, NPSHR 3% is determined and the rest are given us below. And here I want to conclude this video. Thank you.